My father-in-law lives in our town and for the past few years, since my husband and I moved here and had children, we've seen him regularly, at least weekly, and allowed him to be a part of many family events, Christmas morning, trick or treating, etc. The problem is, I can't stand him, and I think recently the fact that he's a perpetual part of my life is getting to me. My husband and I talk about this at length and really don't know how to handle it, as he is constantly applying pressure to see us and when he doesn't hear from us even for a few days makes us think. I'd love to know what those who have local grandparents and parents have in terms of expectations for time spent. Now for details. Off the bat, important to share that undoubtedly my, F34, father-in-law, 78, is a textbook narcissist, undiagnosed, as the worst ones are. He was a terrible husband, verbally, emotionally and perhaps physically abused my mother-in-law and brother-in-law, who is 10 years older than my husband. He really fucked up my BIL, who at 44 is also a huge narcissist with depression and other mental health challenges, and he cheated on my mother-in-law when my husband was 8. Because they divorced after that, my husband miraculously ended up really unscathed and had a great childhood and fine relations with his dad likely due to his mother shielding him and playing the role of primary caregiver. In fact, father-in-law somehow managed to remain a part of everyone's lives, having some custody of my husband, Father I.L. was an adult by the time of the split, combining holidays with my mother I.L. and her new husband, and just generally being around. When I first met my husband, father-in-law was in a new relationship with a woman who was wonderful. This was after three failed marriages, my mother-in-law being his third, and a long-term partnership for 18 years. When you first meet him, he seems like a character more than anything very grandiose, clearly thinks he's charming, and full of anecdotes. Anyone who gets to know him, however, finds that the anecdotes are the same, and tired, and he can actually be quite rude, domineering of conversations, selfish, and stingy. His girlfriend broke up with him after eight years, which at first seemed like a shock to us, but quickly was not all that surprising, given how much better she was than him. She explained the breakup to him while that for all his good qualities, she simply couldn't handle his bad ones anymore in particular how he acts in public, rudeness, stinginess extra pompous behavior. The breakup, devastated, him, and while he initially seemed to reflect on the feedback she gave, it quickly became her fault for the split, and he, being entirely alone in his life, became increasingly needy and more present in our lives than I had ever known him to be. We had just had our first child and thick in the throes of newborn life weren't able to offer him as much company as my BIL was able to, although I will note, he still was seeing us for an hour or so weekly. He became increasingly codependent with my BIL, spending many evenings at his house late into the night, attending parties my BIL hosted, and even vacationing with my BIL and family. Now BIL also can get irritated at his dad, and their relationship is a constant roller coaster of fighting or being attached at the hip. I'm sure there were complex psychological reasons for why BIL was so supportive of him, but DH and I later realized that his motivation was at least partially financial. We realized this when we found out that our FIL bought a vacation home in an area BIL loves and put BIL's name on the deed. Now that situation could be an entirely different post, but very quickly, a fight ensued, BIL cut off all contact with FIL, they sold the house, and two years later still have not spoken. This fallout then left father-in-law with no one. Except for us. We tried to keep the same cadence of visits with him that we always had weekly or so, dinners or quick visits with our children. However, Driven largely by the fact that he really is alone, the requests to see us have done nothing but increase. Our ability to tolerate him waxes and wanes over time, so over the course of the last years we have had times that we've been more amenable to seeing him than not. Important to note my use of the word tolerate because at best, when we spend time with him it's fine, at worst, it's painstaking. It's also important for me to share the ways he is guilting us to see him. First is the explicit shameless guilt. Haven't heard from you in a while. Or, I'm not getting any younger. Or, I won't be around forever so I need to spend time with my granddaughters. He is not shy to tell us what we, should, be doing in terms of involving him. Second, is trying to, buy us and make us feel indebted through thinly veiled offers to help. This is where I struggled the most years ago he gifted us a large sum of money, which we've kept in savings, that he explained was to make us even with my BIL who he had lent the same amount of money to years prior and never received repayment, or mention of repayment for. FIL said that in doing so, he wouldn't have any worries of inequity at the time of his death when his will was being executed. I wasn't super comfortable taking the money, 
but knowing it was to equalize with the BIL helped. Additionally, my FIL has given us some significant gifts he's paid to install a safety fence around our pool. I justified this as something for my daughters, and gave us a new washer dryer as a Christmas gift. I didn't really want either of these gifts to happen because I felt they wouldn't be guilt-free and because we were able to pay for them ourselves. But FIL practically begged as he wanted to contribute as we had just moved into a new house. Additionally, my own parents had contributed similarly to our home as well again, another way I justified. Since, his offers to pay for things for us have not ceased but my husband and I have agreed we will not accept anything from him again, to avoid feeling associated guilt. It's obvious that his offers are a way to have control in fact. Following his fallout with BIL, he quickly removed BIL from his will, instead bequeathing his share to a local animal shelter he did this, as he explained to us, because he knew if he left it all to my husband we would feel compelled to share it with my BIL. Third and finally, he guilt trips us by constantly comparing what he gets to what my parents get in terms of time with us and my daughters. My parents are also local, much younger, 60, still working, have a house with nursery and kids' toys and treats, and are equipped to care for our children. We see them every week or two weeks, but in general have more meaningful time with them too we vacation with them, and they are the backup caretakers for our daughters keeping them for nights or weekends when we are away, or being backup care on snow days or sick days. He is constantly whining about not having time, as compared to them. And while we could explain all of the reasons that logistically my parents get more time with us and the girls, ultimately we prefer them because they are normal, loving, and supportive no-strings-attached parents who on top of it all are people we enjoy being around, and of course I'm biased to my own family, but my husband fully agrees. So all of this huge context aside, I am really struggling on how to handle him we've been living in a cycle of excuses on putting off seeing him and then seeing him, when we have to throw him a bone, only to be guilt about it not being enough. Despite his terrible past, he's never explicitly done anything wrong to us nor is there any tangible evidence I can point to explaining why I don't want him around. He obviously doesn't take feedback either so a rationale discussion about his behavior is off the table, and a he is not a normal person who reads the room so won't get a clue and back off. I'm just wondering, how much is he owed to see us, given all of this? He is a grandfather after all, and my daughters do have fun with him, but they have fun with everyone. And if the answer is nothing or not much, how do we manage making that happen?